you know what? You should conform. Except when you shouldn't. Hi, welcome back to the Colorblind Architect Podcast. I'm your host, David, and welcome back. Yes, today is a good, good day. Um, I got to go to the doctor, and as you know, um, I broke my foot a couple months ago hiking. If you wanted to look up that video, it's Hiking Mount Ogden. It was a really fun hike, but towards the end, uh, my ankle slipped, I broke my foot, and had to walk the last mile of the hike out down a thousand foot vertical drop on a broken foot and it was a bit painful and yeah I do not want to have to repeat that again but the good news is my foot's healed enough that my doctor gave me a clean bill of health he said you're good to go you can walk you can run just take it easy just don't go too fast into it but I am back into the game so yes good good day now as i mentioned in the introduce in, in in the introduction so sometimes you know sometimes you need to conform sometimes you don't so something just happened to me i wasn't planning on making this video today um but as i, w- I was starting to drive home and there was a spot of course where the road narrows from two lanes into one and of course everybody had to merge and fortunately most people were doing the zipper just right where you know people are alternating one car to t- from a lane at a time and you just kind of it's this little happy little dance that people do and then occasionally you would see some slowdowns being caused by somebody trying to get ahead and selfishly get ahead of two cars instead of just one car and of course the whole line would slow down And the thought crossed my mind, you know, this is an example of where it's good to conform. See, in this case, this is a delicate dance of merging where we are all conforming into this beehive mind as we're trying to create this beautiful pattern of of traffic in order to keep it flowing. And as soon as you become an individualist in those cases, you end up screwing up the whole process and you don't end up with the desired result, which is a faster flowing path of travel. Well, that's an amazing thought to think that we can willfully conform to improve our lives. But then there's a lot of times when we shouldn't. Like, for example, right now, I am of the belief that conforming to wearing the masks or having our children wear the masks is just giving the authoritarians additional control. It's not actually helping us. It's not actually doing anything for us. Because what you're really doing is you're putting a lot of hot, moist air right at your mouth and just recirculating that inside your mask and you're increasing your personal likelihood of getting sick. Now, does that mean that I think that we should be all up in people's faces? No, no, keep your distance. Of course, I like keeping my distance anyways because I don't like people. Also, you know, people find me repulsive, so, you know, it works. Anyways, but yeah, keeping distance, I'm fine with that. Just don't make me wear a mask and don't tell me what to do with my body, you know? It's, I'm going to make my own choice. I'm not anti-vax. I'm not pro-vax. I, I'm just make your decision for yourself. Is it desirable for a, a large population to go ahead and get vaccine? Most people get vaccine for most things yeah measles mumps rubella you name it all those wonderful things polio vaccine smallpox vaccine those are wonderful vaccines i'm just not so sure about this current vaccine i mean it's not to say that i'm opposed to it in fact you know i'm not going to say whether i've gotten it or not i'm just not so sure because i'm not so sure that there's enough science to back the idea that we should be forcing people to get a vaccine 
that is still in the experimental phase. It only has emergency approval from the FDA, not official approval. Now, it could be that this is a wonderful vaccine and that it's going to cure everything. So far, the data does not look to be like it is as effective as they originally were thinking. Also, <laughs> true to its form, coronaviruses, right? I mean, there's a reason why the common cold keeps coming back, right? It's because the coronavirus keeps mutating. And that's what COVID is. It's a coronavirus. And they are notorious for mutating. Now, I'm no expert. I'm no epidemiologist. Ask your doctor. Just don't force people to go get the vaccine. Don't force people to not be able to enter into arenas or into restaurants and making them prove that they have been vaccinated. For one thing, that is actually a form of discrimination against people who cannot get the vaccine. Yes, there are actually people who cannot get any vaccines because they're either immunosuppressed or they have allergic reactions and there are reasons why these people cannot get the vaccines. Now, for most people, yeah, they can. But the problem is, if you make this blanket statement of requiring everybody to get a vaccine and then proving that you've gotten the vaccine to be able to do anything and to conduct business, you are discriminating against people who have disabilities. In this case, they have the disability to be able to receive a vaccine. So... Again, I'm not pro-vax or anti-vax. I'm study the science out for yourself, discuss it with your doctor, and get the vaccine if you feel like it is necessary for you personally. But don't make everybody else do what you do. If you're anti if you're against the COVID vaccines, don't tell everybody else that they shouldn't get it. And if you're for the vaccines don't tell everybody else that they should get the vaccine instead just like i said do your own research figure it out for yourself talk with your doctor make sure that you are a good candidate for the vaccine or not this is a personal decision and we shouldn't be forcing people to reveal a card papers please it sounds a little bit like something I thought Antifa was against. With that, I bid you adieu for another day. I'm the colorblind architect. Peace out.